Feast TV is brought to you with the support from Missouri Wines, Ikea, Caldi's Coffee, Old Time Produce, and the Raphael Hotel. In this episode, we explore how a restaurant concept becomes reality. I'm Kat Neville, and this is Feast TV. treat because we're going to get inside what it takes to go from restaurant concept to reality. We're going to head over to Kansas City to meet the couple behind the Antler Room. We're going to show you how Vicia recently opened his doors in St. Louis. But first, let's meet Rob Connolly. He's in the process of concepting Bull Rush here in St. Louis. And so tonight he's hosting a pop-up at This Is Not A Restaurant upstairs from Brennan's. Come with me. Be our acorn croquette with dried virginica flour, red bud caper, pickled oyster mushroom babies, and this is the amaranth wild grass porridge. Okay, I need to get work on my tortillas. You're from St. Louis. Born and raised. But you've been in Santa Fe or near Santa Fe for what, 30 years? So I went off to undergrad back in 86. And I went to undergrad in New Orleans and then went off and got my doctorate and, and have had two careers after that before I started cooking. Uh, my background's uh, social psychology of sport and exercise, of course. sports psychologist. <laughs> and I also was marketing and advertising in my undergrad. Uh, but I've always cooked, always. And I've never not cooked everything from scratch, even way back then. Um, it's just now things have gotten more sophisticated in what I do. I take a little piece of every place I've lived and it's definitely incorporated into my food. The menu is a, it's a tasting menu and for me that means not just a bunch of interesting plates but everything has a progression. Mm -hmm. You know, as we go through this, we're ultimately building up like a musical piece to the point that we get to the entree, which is gonna be a sous vide roasted duck. Okay. And it's gonna have the crisp skin, but it's gonna be very moist. And throughout here, we have interesting flavors tying in all these forged ingredients. Okay, this all looks good. I think we can make it a great night. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. During the day, Frank, who I've known for a long time, he is the marketing guru for Caldi's, but in your past life, you were a chef. Yeah. And this is not a restaurant series. Seems to really dovetail with your love for that. Yeah, it has. I mean, I after college, went to culinary school in Italy and then worked there, worked in New York City, came back here and was in a restaurant here for a long time and eventually just got out of it. And uh, I've been with Caldi's now for 10 years, uh, but I still have the passion for cooking. Like, I absolutely love it. I've been able to use some of that towards Caldi's, but then also some of these side projects like This Is Not A Restaurant. So the way This Is Not A Restaurant works is that you go out and find really interesting food people. Yeah. They can be chefs, they can be people like me. I've actually right. done a that This Is Not A Restaurant dinner. Very good one. It was very fun. Um, but, so what is the process? Um, you know, there's pop-up restaurants around St. Louis, around the region, which I think is an awesome concept. We wanted to create something where the space always remained the same, but it was kind of a one night stand with a chef or a foodie or a culinarian. So a lot of these folks, when they come in, they don't have active restaurants. Yeah. They are testing out different ideas. So Rob Connolly, he is going to be opening up a place called Bull Rush. And this is his second or third dinner here? He, this will be his second. His second. Yeah. He's from St. Louis, has been away, I think, for 30 years. Uh, has been in the Southwest for a number of years, had a place there, which I hear was just incredible, uh, but he's back. 
but I don't know how many people know Rob's story. So for you know an event like tonight, there's gonna be 32 fresh faces that not only get to eat Rob's food, but get to know Rob. As much as it is about the food, it's about the connection with the chef. Tell me about the concept for Bull Rush. The concept is without making it an issue of saying hyper seasonal, hyper local, that's what we're doing because it's foraged. We're gonna go out pretty much every morning, gather things, bring them back and serve them. The most basic question that every forager has to have the answer, what will kill me? Because when I go through the woods, as long as I know what's gonna kill me, I can eat everything. And I find a lot of surprises doing that. And once you know that you're not gonna die and it tastes good, even if you've never heard of anyone else eating it, then you've got a new ingredient. And we're discovering things all the time. So these are some of the things that we've gathered this past week. And even this morning, Justin went out and gathered some fresh things. And this is a spice bush. And uh, a lot of people have foraged the spice bush berry but the buds and the twigs themselves are usable. This is dandelion flower salt. I think it's gonna end up being with an acorn croquette. Okay. We do a lot with acorns in this kitchen um, and, and the fried acorn croquette is just, it's begging for this floral aroma and the salt. So how do these types of like pop-up or one-off dinners, how do they help you solidify your concept? They're good testing grounds. Um, my last restaurant was successful. My customers were very loyal. Here, no one knows me. They don't know my food. They don't know my background. They could care less. Not only that, there's a hundred other great chefs in town. So being able to do these pop-ups gives me a safe environment. There's an intimacy where I get immediate feedback. To me, I need to know if people enjoy the food like every meal, not just every meal, every plate, not just every plate, every bite. And these pop-ups, it gives me that snapshot version of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Here, we're gonna get through the night, people are gonna love it. And uh, I'm gonna spend a lot of time with the guests talking to them about the foraging concept and why I do it. Uh, but what I look forward to is at the end, listening to the, what they're talking about. Are they talking about the blues and the cardinals? I hope so, <laughs> but I really hope they're talking about the acorn croquette or I didn't know you could eat chickweed. That's what I really want to hear. I've never had a chance to really taste Missouri in the way that you're going to be able to really bring that to the plate. And that's what I'm excited about is the surprises. And I'm sure that everybody sitting here tonight is going to have their minds and their hearts open to this kind of journey that you're going to take them on. Next up, we're going to meet a couple who just opened their restaurant that's been many months in the making. And now we're at Vicia in the Cortex Innovation Center in St. Louis. This is their first day of operation and they're focused on innovative vegetable forward cuisine. Come on inside. I'm Tara Galina. I am the owner and general manager of Vicia uh, and we open today. My husband Michael and I decided to move back to St. Louis in November of 2015. Uh, we were previously working at Blue Hill at Stone Barns, that's where we met, uh, and we decided that it was time to kind of go out on our own uh, and have our own adventure, and St. Louis felt like a really good fit for us. Michael is from St. Louis, I am not, but I've come back several times and really kind of fell in love with what was going on in the city and felt like the food culture here was really getting ready to explode. So it really just made sense for us to be close to family, but also go somewhere where we felt like we could really um, have an impact uh, on the food community. And as things go, we were brought down to the Cortex Innovation District for a meeting to actually talk about a pop-up dinner. And we were like, what's Cortex? Uh, but after we left, we got a tour. Uh, we kind of got the whole master plan, what was uh, going on here over the next five years. And we felt like, wow, this would be an incredible place to have a restaurant. Um, and after we looked at several areas across the city, we really felt like Cortex had 
so much growth potential. It was really starving for a community restaurant. Uh, so it just felt like that perfect fit for us to be a community-minded place, but also really pushing the envelope, which I feel like our cuisine does. I think that opening a restaurant, it's gotta be one of these things where you're like, <laughs> okay, you take a yeah. deep breath and then you just open the door. So, I mean, how do you feel right now? And I, I feel incredible. Yeah, we, we wanted to kind of come to St. Louis and, and not just like be these New York chefs and, that open up a restaurant and, and whatever, you know, we wanted to really kind of adapt to our community and meet everybody and, and be a part of the city of St. Louis before we opened our own spot. When we moved here, we thought, hey, let's try a pop-up dinner and kind of just feel out um, you know, what St. Louis is excited about. Let's show them what we're about uh, and get some feedback. And we planned on doing one, and we ended up doing a little over 20 uh, over the course of a year. But I feel like the pop-ups helped us find staff, helped us find future customers, and really helped us find our voice and kind of finalize and fine-tune what we thought that the concept really needed to be. So when people come to Vizia, we want them to be excited. We want them to see things that maybe they've never had before or maybe are served in a way that they've never had before. Cuts of vegetables that are a little unusual. We really want to celebrate whole grains, fresh produce, um, really wonderfully raised meats that we're cooking outside on our grill. We want the food to be power food, make you feel good, uh, especially at our lunchtime menu. People have to go back to work. We want them to feel energized, but also know that each time they come back, the menu's going to be a little bit different so they can look forward to something new. Vegetable forward to us means kind of just shifting the perspective a little bit and not always thinking that it has to be a protein with some things on the side. How can we make the vegetable be the exciting part of the plate and maybe the meat is on the side? So vegetable forward cuisine. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it, for me it's really about appreciation for, for vegetables. I love working directly with the farmers and going out to the farm and, and having them kind of direct me on what they want me to use and it sparks all my kind of creativity. I just love cooking with them. So you've been open for a day. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and currently you're doing lunch service. Yeah. So how are you varying your lunch and your dinner service? Because they're, they are quite different. We're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, so yeah, lunch, I mean lunch is much more of a kind of casual counter service, but we're really focusing on the same ingredients that we're using tonight. So there's going to be a lot of crossover for the same product, just different ways to prepare it. So at nighttime, is definitely going to be a more elevated dining experience, but I don't want it to be um, fine dining by any means. I want it to be approachable. I want our food to be available to everybody and to kind of be able to come in and have an experience. Being married and working together and starting a business together is a very unique experience and I would say it's probably not for everybody but Michael and I are really a very good team uh, and even when we're not working we're kind of always talking about work. Every time we go out to eat we kind of can't help but be taking notes and kind of thinking about what we can be doing as well. So Michael's quietest time is actually when I'm asleep. He is notorious for sending me emails in the middle of the night with ideas that he has that he wants to talk about the next day. And I'm like, when do you sleep? Um, but his mind is always racing. Uh, and so that's kind of, I think, when we can really kind of then say, hey, this made sense in the middle of the night. Let's talk it through and see if it makes sense in real life. <laughs> and sometimes it does. And some of his best ideas, I think, came from those three o'clock in the morning emails. Tara says that you don't actually sleep. It varies by the night. <laughs> but I email myself ideas as they come to me through the night. It's probably where I, I get some of my more creative ideas. So one of those three in the morning ideas that Michael had was for carrot porchetta. So he tells me I'm going to shave thin slices of carrots, I'm going to stuff it with sausage, I'm going to roll it like you would a piece of porchetta, and I'm going to bread it and fry it. And I was like, I don't know that that will really work. But hey, you know, I, I wanted to give him a chance and he made it for me one night on a Sunday. I cut into it and I was like, oh my god, this is delicious but I definitely doubted him uh, and I said that will never work and it really did. Um, so I've learned to just always, always trust him. He knows what he's doing. How to connect and tell stories through food is what really drives me and what drives Michael. First day, what is your hope for the future of the restaurant? Like when you, when you put it in your head and you, Kind of project yourself where do you where do you hope that you're going to be i just 
want to create a great restaurant with delicious food that people feel comfortable coming to all the time. We're trying to build a very approachable, fun restaurant. We're doing four by eight, so eight rows. Okay. Everything should be pre-counted, but we're double checking. Two, four, six, there should be two more rows. Two, four, six, seven, 28, 30. What's our All right, guys. If I can have your attention, please, we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name's Frank. I wanted to welcome you guys to This Is Not A Restaurant. Uh, this thing's been going on now for well over a year. I think we've run through close to 20 chefs uh, who've come in and done their thing for a night or two and then disappeared. So uh, we're excited you guys are here. You're in for a really special treat. Uh, but I also wanted to introduce Chef Rob Conley. Uh, Chef Rob is a native of St. Louis, has been gone for about 30 years, and we're fortunate enough to have him back. Uh, he's in the middle of opening Bull Rush, uh, his restaurant that's going to open here soon in St. Louis. And I think what you're going to experience tonight will just be a sneak peek of what the concept and vibe of his restaurant's going to be. Well, thanks for coming. My sous chef Justin and I will be describing each course as the night goes on. A lot of the food that you're having was gathered a year ago, two years ago, um, because we ferment and cure and pickle and do all these things that take a long time. And then it all comes together on a plate in about 30 seconds. You eat in two spoonfuls and it's gone. <laughs> what we do here is hyper fresh. Justin and I have been foraging all week and uh, you're gonna eat it now. And so I'm gonna leave it at that. Thank you again and let's start eating. This is a foraged acorn financier. The yellow powder is a cattail pollen. We also have red bud jelly. Uh, great mustarda, and this is, I don't want to say it's the essence of the forest floor. That's a little too pretentious, right? But th this is what Justin foraged just this morning. He got a whole bunch of interesting things and turned it into a drink for you. Enjoy. an acorn croquette in front of you. Underneath that is a wild grass and amaranth seed porridge. Um, there are pickled red bud capers, pickled oyster mushrooms from last fall, and then uh, the Virginia bluebell flowers that Rob mentioned earlier, they're on there two ways. There's fresh and dehydrated also. And a trout lily leaf on there too. Thank you. Okay, your next course. This is a duck taco, black beans, uh, forage sumac duca. We've got black trumpet fermented honey drizzled on the top, uh, field garlic powder, chickweed, uh, and the tortilla itself, which is underneath, is made out of acorn. Enjoy. Thanks for coming today. Absolutely. How's this end of the table? And now we're headed to Kansas City for a taste of the antler room. I'm Nick Gellner and we're at my wife and I's restaurant, The Antler Room, in Kansas City, Missouri. At first, when I entered the industry, I was just trying to keep my head above water. And that lasted for years. I'm not a naturally talented cook. It's all from practice um, and, and work, really, for me. Slowly, as you gain more confidence, you start to kind of find your own voice. And for me, that has been um, a pretty recent development, actually. I think every cook goes through a stage where they think that the more elements on a plate, uh, the better the dish. And I still do like that kind of food, but I've realized it's not really for me. I like a few elements on a plate that all speak for themselves very loudly. I like really strong flavors that stand on their own. I 
I spent four months in Copenhagen um, at Noma as a stage. The culture of the kitchen itself is what really made a mark on me. Just seeing how driven everybody was, I've just tried to bring part of that to this restaurant. When we first opened, I wanted to make sure that the kitchen was as collaborative as possible. I wanted everybody to feel like they had ownership of this place. I wanted everybody to feel like they could be as creative as they wanted to be. And it's really worked out in our benefit, I think. I have two sous chefs, Nick Chiaro and Andrew Heimberger, and they have really, really helped to push our food forward. Chef Andrew will be making a foie gras torchon with a squash carpaccio. And then Chef Nick will be making a beef tongue with salt baked rutabaga and rice chip. When I came in to dine a couple of weeks ago, I was just really blown away by how beautiful the plating is. I mean, it's just, it's simple and it's colorful and it's just gorgeous. Yeah, we don't have very many components on a lot of our dishes, so it's even more important that they are striking when they hit the table. This particular dish with the squash carpaccio, I had never seen anything like that on a menu. And when I tasted it, all of the different elements were so perfectly in harmony with each other, but very distinct. This is uh, Chef Andrew's dish. And um, the first iteration of it was good, but it still needed some work. And he just kept at it. And now it's one of our uh, most popular dishes on the menu. And this is rutabaga and, and beef tongue. Yeah, so this dish is the brainchild of our other sous chef, Nick. On the bottom is salt-baked rutabaga. so whole rutabaga that's been encased in salt and whipped egg whites, a meringue. What we love to hear at this restaurant is when a guest says, I didn't know what anything was, but I loved all of it. That's <laughs> great when we hear that. So if you could encapsulate the antler room experience when you guys were envisioning this how did you want it to feel i wanted it to be comfortable and cozy but it's the full experience it's not just the food it's not just the wine it's not just your service people are not just paying for one thing anymore so you mentioned that you had a number of pop-ups as you were creating the concept and getting things ready how did that impact the way that, that you actually came through to the opening. It built our clientele. It created a buzz. It helped us figure out drinks. It helped us figure out food. Some of our staff came through that. It sounds like being able to have those, you know, those test runs essentially really just helped to hone in on the concept. Priceless. And everyone was so positive and really nice and just wanted us to open and be successful more than anything. And I think that's a very Midwestern kind of mentality that we're all we're in it together. Yeah, that was really powerful, I think, for both of us. So the pop-ups uh, that we did in the year before we opened the restaurant were extremely important for us. It taught us a lot about the clientele that we were going to have at the restaurant. It taught us what ideas we had would work and what ideas wouldn't work. I can't really see us being able to open this place without those pop-ups. The name of the restaurant, where did it come from? What is the thing with the antlers? Bad story. <laughs> That's so, what I'm asking. So, dumb. so we couldn't think of a name at all. It, it was terrible. One of our friends had told us about a building for sale in the West Bottoms that was the Antler Lounge. And I had kind of always been wanting to tie some sort of Kansas City thing, but not be so blatant about it. So I had written just the antler on a list as here's our long list of things. We have a pop-up in a month, we better come up with a name because it can't just be the Leslie and Nick show. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick came in and wrote room on the end of it. Like, okay, now it's, it's something, it's a place. You said that you wanted this place to feel very cozy and yeah. welcoming and comfortable. And using the yeah. word room, as opposed to cafe or restaurant or bistro, it, it yeah. feels very welcoming. 
just in the name of it. Yeah, I want it to feel like someone's home that you were having dinner in. So the two of you mm -hmm. run the restaurant. Natasha, yeah. who is Nick's sister, she does all the amazing pastries. Yes. Your father-in-law helped to build out the interior. I mean, this is a this is a family yeah. restaurant. Yeah, I mean, my dad built all the tables and the host stand, and my mom made the curtains in the bathrooms. Like my stepfather negotiated our lease, and <laughs> it is a uh, it's a family affair. Yeah, yeah, very very connected. I still feel like we have so much to do and so many things to make it what we want it to be. But at the same time, I'm happy and I'm proud, but um, you know, also looking forward to the eventual day when we can, you know, maybe have a night off sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you know what industry yeah. you're in, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've heard rumors people do take nights off. <laughs> So what is it that, that makes you want to be here day in and day out creating these dishes? I, I actually like the culture in professional kitchens. I like that it's a meritocracy. You get judged on what you have actually completed. Every day you know what you've made and you used your own hands to make it. I didn't want to make food that was easily forgettable. That was a, a important thing that Leslie and I always talked about was we wanted people to remember what they ate when they left the restaurant. We try not to worry about what's happening around us as much as possible. We kind of try to just keep on doing what we think we should be doing and that's kind of given us a distinctiveness, I think. Thank you again for coming tonight. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit about Bull Rush, which will be coming uh, hopefully later this year. You, you see what the concept is. We forage, we come back, we cook. Everything will be super special. It's meant to be an experience. It's not your every weekend restaurant. I want to see you on your birthdays, your anniversaries, your divorces, whatever, I don't care. Come celebrate with us. I want to give you a meal like tonight that you've never had before and never will again. Um, to avoid doing dishes, I'll be hanging out out here. And, <laughs> it's true. 